Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The latest legal wrangle between ESCOM and NERSA came to a head this week. Terence Kruma joins me to discuss this case. Hi, Terence. Hi, Shana. Why did ESCOM seek the court's intervention against NERSA? Well, on the 30th of September, NERSA officially rejected ESCOM's revenue application for the next uh, control period or tariff cycle, which would start next year, April. And the reason it gave is that ESCOM was not compliant with the methodology. But on the other hand, there was no new methodology in place. So ESCOM had submitted formally its application on the 2nd of June using the methodology that was determined in 2016 and under which the current tariffs were determined. Uh, there was a feeling that, ESC- that NERSA may revise that methodology, but that there had been no movement. And on the 30th of September, they rejected uh, ESCOM's uh, application and said that they're going to now consult on the principles of a new methodology, not on a a new methodology itself. So ESCOM found this untenable and approached the courts and said, you know, it needs to have clarity. It needs to have a legal tariff in place by the 1st of April, or it could have catastrophic implications for its uh, revenue. Uh, for uh, and for the municipalities that also have to start charging the new tariff uh, system from the 1st of July in their case. So they needed an urgent intervention from the court, one to overturn or set aside this rejection of its uh, application, uh, and secondly, to set out a clear course of events or uh, a clear pathway to having a legal tariff determination that can be implemented on the 1st of April next year. So that's really the background for this case. Why did NERSA adopt such a stance? Well, I think NERSA was intending to have a new methodology. Lots of changes are happening in uh, the electricity supply industry and at ESCOM, which they note in their consultation paper on the principles that should govern a new methodology. And... uh, That is really, those changes really relate to the fact that ESCOM is no longer the sole supplier. There's a lot more RPP capacity coming into the system. And secondly, ESCOM itself is restructuring into three uh, with generation, transmission, and distribution. And with the view that the transmission business should be vertically separated, even though it's still under ESCOM holdings by the end of the year. So the feeling was that this methodology, the MIPD, uh, methodology currently determining the MIPD4 cycle, which is the current uh, cycle we're in, should be replaced by something more fit for purpose that's more uh, reflective of the new regime. But basically, NERSA then sat on its hands and did nothing. They had a draft of this uh, submission of, um, of ESCIMS, which they knew had been done under the old methodology, or the current methodology. Uh, they knew it had been done under that all the way back in March. The formal lodging was in, in June. So they had full visibility and yet did nothing about it. And yet, uh, after the 30th of September, suggested that the methodology had expired and therefore Eskom's application was illegal and should not be accepted. And uh, they then asked Eskom to make revisions to their application integrating these principles, which had not, which also had not been finalized. These only got finalized in the last week or so, and actually um, had not been communicated to Eskom by the time the court case happened on the 1st of December. So they had some method in their madness, but there, it seemed like more madness prevailed than method. What were some of the highlights of the judgment? Well, I think uh, the main highlight was how quickly it was delivered. Uh, This hearing was held virtually on the 1st uh, of December. Uh, It was held in a very efficient manner, uh, mostly, I think, because Judge Jody Collipin already has a good handle on Eskim Nursa activities. He's made a number of rulings in the recent past. All of those, most of those, were adverse towards Nursa. I think that he didn't have to... You know, he could see the wood for the trees immediately, so he didn't have to have a long hearing. He then went about crafting a very succinct and clear uh, judgment, which was published only two days later. And it basically shows that uh, 
Eskom's proposed option, which was called option four, of getting to a tariff was just not tenable, that it was not going to uh, be able to be done in time, and it was going to be done in a, in a vacuum with no methodology in place. So those are really the highlights. It really was a bloody nose for NERSA, uh, basically saying that this the approach was totally would have been totally illegal. And obviously that would have also then been open to some sort of legal objection, whether from Eskom or from the public. So it was a, for, for me, the, the big highlight is how quickly the courts responded, how competently the courts have responded and how they are able to cut through the arguments, which were in many, many pages uh, in a very succinct judgment. What happens now? Well, that's the other very important highlight of the judgment, which I didn't actually mention, is that there's an order within this judgment that sets out a clear timetable. So we know that Eskom submitted to NERSA in June, so they've had this application. That was actually for three years, but the judges said, we'll just look at 2022-23, and that that must now be published on the 8th of December. So the public has visibility of what Eskom is asking for. We, we, we suspect, or well, we know, because there's been some leakage of the document, even though Eskom hasn't made it available more NERSA, that it's going to be in that 15 to 20% range. But we also know that uh, Eskom generally doesn't get what it asks for. Then there will be a period of, you know, where the public can make written comments. And the judge there has said that those must be wrapped up by the 14th of January. And thereafter, the, the NERSA should hold public hearings on the merits of the application between the 17th of January to the 21st of January. And that should give NERSA enough time then and enough information to make a determination by the 25th of February. That's an important date because by the 15th of March, this has to be tabled before Parliament in line with the Municipal Finance Management Act because uh, this is how this, it's a very stepwise process and that is the final step before a, a legal tariff can be implemented on April 1. And then for obviously for the municipalities, their visibility for their budgeting uh, when they implement from, from July 1. So it's a very important to have that tabling by the, the 15th of March. And that's also why the timelines outlined by NERSA and its option, uh, which were objected to by Eskom, in the sense that this would have triggered some sort of consultation with Salga and with the National Treasury, which probably would have added 40 days to the process, making it very, really impossible to have a legal tariff determination ready for implementation on uh, April 1. So the courts have intervened and we now have clarity. And now it's going to go back to those deja vu all over again type hearings where we go through the process where there's going to be a lot of objections to what Eskom's asking for. Uh, and there's going to be pushback from Eskom, and then the regulator has to come to an ultimate decision. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.